Welcome back to Mindful Endeavors. I am your new age al- new age alchemist. And really quick, as usual, the disclaimer: you know, we're not mental health professionals. We're not necessarily giving medical advice. We're just making sure we're, we're that we keep the conversations going around mental health and then other issues that may tie into that. If you feel that you need uh, medical help, obviously we obviously encourage you to seek it. But we also encourage the people to keep having these conversations. All right. With that being said, you're back, Anthony Rodriguez, Sharper hey. and you are what I consider my financial expert because you know you uh, have a few business, <laughs> you have a few businesses, so you're doing you know you know you're doing pretty well for yourself. So yeah, you know you you kind of broke away from that rat race. So you know you're you're working for yourself. Yeah. And uh, really quick for those that haven't listened to a previous episode, you know, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Anthony Rodriguez. I'm a California-based entrepreneur, and uh, yeah, I left the standard nine to five about ooh, maybe two years ago and i've just been uh, doing it on my own uh i run a couple businesses i have a watch business it's called uh roman watches see one of the Roman watches right there so you can check that out romanwatches.com uh, i'm in real estate and uh in the stock market like a lot of people did join this during this coronavirus but um so yeah i run a couple businesses and uh yeah that's what i do and yeah, we've, I mean, we've known each other like for a, whew, like over 20, no, maybe like 15, long time. Nah, 20 years. 20, 20 years. years huh? Yeah. 20 years. It's, it's been a long time. We definitely had some uh, yeah. fun memories in middle school, and then you, you decided to ditch us for a rival school. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many gangs were all that. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. But, uh, but yeah, dude, like, so we've known each other for 20 years. We kind of like didn't keep in touch for a little while, but, you know, here we are thanks to social media we're you know keep in touch again and yep. that's awesome that's one of the benefits of social media but today we're going to talk about uh something that is not i don't think is really talked about when it comes to mental health just, and that is financial stability um so we're going to talk about certain to to a couple topics first of all and then we're going to talk about fitness but the very first thing is like well you know like you like you said you broke out of the rat race two years ago and you're you know you're building yourself up yeah. So one of the things that we didn't explore last time you we were here is barriers of entry to entrepreneurship, which I think, you know, is definitely important to talk about because a lot of people, may, they may be in a situation where they can, you know, start their own business, but they don't necessarily know how. Yeah. And, you know, they can't even try it like, you know, even the first time because ultimately there's different barriers. Like, for, for example, the fear, the fear, that's the very yep. first thing that kind of like ruins everything. I'm fear of sure the unknown. Know. Yeah. Fear of failure. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of fears. Yeah. Right. And you know, it's like, it's one of those things where like, even like when you do certain like, you know, endeavors that are, you know, financial endeavors, like even if you fail, you learn a lot. So, I mean, I definitely yeah. have done a couple of things that, Definitely, I'm not proud of because they <laughs> failed. But at the same time, it's like okay, yeah. now I know what not to get into. And yeah, yeah. so and, you know, briefly, kind of like talk about like any hurdles that you came across when you were starting your business businesses. Um, definitely, it's the the fear of a failure, and a lot of times, sometimes it's not a clear blueprint of how you should approach, you know, certain industries, whatever. If you want to start your own company or you know a service based company, whatever it is, is definitely the fear of the unknown. Like, will I succeed? You know, or will I fail? How you know, how long am I going to go until I get become successful? It's just so many unknowns as opposed to like having a nine to five. You know, you show up to work every day. You do your job. You're going to be fine. Eventually you promote. It's just the fear of the unknown. And there's a lot of, uh, yeah, you learn by failure a lot of times along the way. You know, spending too much money on advertising and that fails or not advertising correctly at all. And that's not coming across or. Um, just uh, spending too much is this is there's so many monetary penalties for not doing the right thing when you don't even know what is the right thing so it's just the the fear of the unknown basically and then um yeah and then you, you and then you have to rely on yourself like you need to you need to be your your own cheerleader because in this new yeah. endeavor whatever your job is like you got to have faith in yourself because yeah. you don't know what's going to come you just got to make, you have to feel in yourself that you can succeed. No matter what happens, you'll overcome, you'll adapt, and you'll succeed. And I think it's just, it's just a, it's a, it's a hard mental game. You got to play with yourself to succeed. Yeah. And that was, that's the easiest one to really pick on because it's still like, I mean, it sounds like 
a cliche that you would see like on a meme, but it's really it's really true. A lot of people like they don't they put off their dreams because of the fear of the unknown. Like, what if I do this? I don't have a safety net. Like, what, what can I fall back on? And it's like it's, it's a lot of stress that comes with that because then you have people that are stuck in nine to five that you know maybe they're they're paying, you know they're they're doing well off for themselves and you know they have yeah. their comfortable home. They have you know their families or not no families, but you know they have like hard party money or things like that. But um, sometimes they don't necessarily like the job they're, that they're in, or maybe they don't like the company that they're in. And one of the things that kind of sucks about working that is that you have to kind of bounce around before you really do find something that, you know, you do enjoy working at. And I think, uh, you know, that can kind of play a toll in, its, in itself, especially when you look at like how fragile certain industries are, like, you know, as we saw during the COVID, a lot of uh, places were shut down um you know and we can yeah. you know that the, the different the, the the conversations you know around that is you know that's a different story but you know yeah. you, like you saw that yourself as well yeah that's uh that, that's it's all bad uh well, what are you, you know i thought about this right now sometimes it's not even like the fear of unload sometimes people just have uh, they're like oh, i'm ready to go ready to go and you just have analysis paralysis you're just thinking like okay but i need still need that i, I still need to make do this and, <clears throat> do this step and then, and then you're literally just you're not even you're spinning your wheels but you're not making any moves you're just sitting there like tomorrow i'll get this done or i'm not ready i need to save just a little bit more and some people just don't ever make a move they'll sit at their job or whatever at, at home with their couch and without ever doing a move just because analysis you're overthinking it just go I like a lot of these uh you know entrepreneurs they they always tell you just do something take action start today do just start something you know open the bank account you know purchase your first inventory just whatever you're gonna do just go start doing something and yeah um, like, yeah well do you think they, they, what do you think about the, the approach of like okay setting small milestones and then working through those milestones like what do you think about that oh yeah that's definitely that makes things more realistic and that's one of the things you learn to like you give yourself uh due dates you know by the end of this week i need to have this much money saved or by the end of this week i need to purchase this equipment or whatever you're, those those small uh, due dates uh, definitely make things more realistic, and that's how you, you, I've seen very successful people tell me that's how they that's the method they apply to their system of getting things done, and it works for sure. Fortunes yeah, are. I mean, yeah, and like I've I'm uh, definitely I'm at fault when it comes to like the analysis paralysis type of thing because I do yeah. overthink some. Well, yeah. see, okay, so my problem is that. <laughs> The stuff that I shouldn't overthink, I overthink, and the stuff that I should pause and think about, I'm just like all gun home, like, all right, screw this, let's do this, and then it yeah. ends up biting me in the butt later on. It's like, and when if I had just stopped for two seconds and been like, okay, this is not worth it for me, then I would have avoided that whole pain and everything. So yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I definitely am better at that now, but that was definitely me in like prior years where it's like, <sighs> and then even then, like. Cause I mean, I was caught up also in like, Oh, well I have some debt and all that stuff. And yeah. you know, I can't really like do some kind of risky, you know, business endeavor That's because nice. I have all this debt. And if I don't have a job, if I leave my current stable job, how am I going to pay the debt with something that I'm really going to try? Yeah, so, that's that's the, the whole your, your whole breakdown. That's how people literally every day when they're trying to make the leap, that's the, the, the process they're going through in their head. But um, actually one of the, the things that does help is like, Say you have a lot of friends who have nine to five. It's it's helpful to get in a group or be around other entrepreneurs or people who've started their own side hustles. They may have a nine to five, but on the side, you know, I don't know, they sell cupcakes or whatever it is. But they have they do have their own little business on the side. So I think that would probably be that's probably the best way to do it. You have your nine to five, and on the side, you just you know say like this podcast. You know, you have your your main job, and then this podcast is your your startup, and you 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 know you if you're building more episodes, putting more episodes, more content, like this is your own thing you're starting on the side. So I think the best way to do it is just start on the side, start small, and then build up, build up till it can replace you know your main source of income. But I think when you do it like that, you don't have to do a crazy jump, you know, and just hope you fly, take off. That, that <laughs> I think is the best way to do it. Yeah, I don't recommend doing that. I I, I did that but I don't recommend to do that. Yeah. Same. I definitely don't recommend that. And, mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, I think also too, a lot of people think that there's, um, one of the barriers of entry is just kind of like doubt. Well, we kind of talked about fear, but th this is more like the doubt aspect of it because a lot of times, like when they, people tend to compare themselves with some, with somebody else, they oh, yeah. do it in the wrong way. Right. So 
yeah. they may think, oh, well, this person is doing it because they have money. Well, you don't really know in the back, in like in the back end, what they went through to achieve all that, right? Right. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that you know I'm hoping that you know we can kind of you know elaborate a little bit more on because like nowadays, I mean, w- I mean that kind of plays into the barrier of entry of money, right? The the money, like not everybody has like an extra few thousand dollars to be able to invest, and I get that. Yeah. But um, you know, depending on like what you do, I mean, there's a lot of resources out there. And I mean, yep. you definitely know, I mean, you recommended a, a several resources to me and, you know, you can go ahead and, you know, talk about more, talk more about that. Yeah. Well, nowadays you could, believe it or not, there's grants you can get from the government. The government can actually give you grants for some, depending on what kind of a uh, industry you're trying to get into, you can get a grant for that. Um, there's like GoFundMe pages. There's, there's a lot of, a lot of GoFundMe type, organizations out there where you just start a campaign and say hey you know i want to raise you know five thousand ten thousand dollars for my uh chocolate company we want to make chocolate you know gluten-free chocolate whatever it is you start a campaign you know you have a good a good slogan and you know a good message behind why you want to do it and a lot of these websites you can go on there and get funding five ten thousand dollars you know set it out go mad on time and you know advertise you know this is what we're trying to get we're trying to get and people will get funded that way uh, or family members, you know, you get sit your family down, like, hey, you know, I'm here, I want to start a company, a landscaping company. I just need money for a couple, a lawnmower, a truck, all my equipment, just to get me started. And you seed money from your family members, or you know, the last one would be real risky is credit cards. But I don't, I wouldn't recommend printing everything on credit cards. But I mean, there's funding out there. You can get money out there. You know, family, friends credit cards possibly uh if you have a good a solid uh business plan you can get a loan from the bank um or yeah funding there's a you know, fund these websites like gofundme um what's the one i can't think one's coming to my head there's one or it's uh i can't think of it right now but yeah there's websites where you can just go there start a campaign and raise funds that way yeah and i mean you also see um a lot of people leveraging social media um social media yeah and that's kind of a, I guess, close to free because I mean, you still have to pay for internet. But I think at yeah. this point, it's a utility where, luckily in this country, you know, a lot of us, you know, have access to it. And um, so, <clears throat> I mean, there's definitely lots of resources that we can, that people can get started on there and not even necessarily making money. But if you spend some time on the side researching stuff, you know, and you get right. more confidence in terms of like making that leap because now all of a sudden, you know, figuratively speaking, that leap seems shorter. Right. So you're able to, you know, because it's like, all right, well, now this risk is no longer just random risk. It's calculated risk, which is, you know, mm-hmm. gives you a bit of more of a peace, peace of mind because, hey, you know, like it's calculated. Okay. I know that I need very limited resources on this or what have you. And, uh, or I know a lot of, you know, experience through the people, the, you know, the resources that people put out, which is oh. an, an awesome thing. Actually, you know what, uh, as far as barriers to entry, so depending on your industry, I've found there's a lot of like groups in really niche groups, whatever you want to be, uh, whatever you want to do. Say you want to start a vending machine company, like you can go on Facebook or even Reddit and there's like these, these little communities that deal in just that industry and your cost of entry into the, into the business might be a little, a lot lower. They might say, Oh, you know, I know a guy who has a, a vending machine. He can give it to you for 500 bucks or whatever it is, or, you know, Facebook groups or whatever your, your, your industry that you want to be in, someone can give you knowledge, firsthand knowledge of what it's like in that industry, you know, whatever it be. So I actually, um, one of the industries I wanted to get into was getting into a- ATMs, right? I wanted to purchase an ATM and, you know, put it in convenience stores and basically make some passive money that way. Just putting money in the ATM, people use it. I make money. So I actually joined a Facebook group uh, that just dealt with ATM. It was just an ATM business face, face group, group, Facebook group. And through that Facebook group, I was able to get in contact with someone trying to sell an ATM. And I got it for half what it was going for on a retail website, something like that. And not only did they tell me, they, they sold it to me, they told me how to set it up. They told me how, you know, the best banks to work with when doing it. So like I got so much inside knowledge for that industry just by, uh, joining this group that uh, like that's a cheat code like the amount of knowledge <laughs> you, 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 you're, it's free it's free info like these guys as long as you're in their group they're going to give you this information for free 
just because you're part of their their you know their their world. So like there's a lot of people out there who want to give you free information if you ask. And you just gotta find their group and just get in there. And uh, those Facebook groups I, I found for different topics. Like I've seen I found one that's a uh, it's about traveling. Tra so it's like so they're they're just a group of people talking about hey if you go on this airline on this day you know you can fly to Mexico for like thirty bucks or something like that and there's there's this people who are specifically on one topic and I'm like oh wow like there's a lot of free knowledge out there of people who are just willing to share. So yeah, I mean yeah, obviously it still takes a little bit of fil filtration because they I mean that's yeah. just a natural thing. There's there's yeah. scam artists everywhere, but that's true. Yeah. But you do you have you make a very very great point because I also have because I do want to start an apparel business and then some kind of merch regarding the podcast just as a way to kind of like promote it and also to be able to like able to do this full time one of these days right um, but there's there's people there that are, they're just talking about merch like yeah. you know how to how to get started on merch how to do a giveaway how to advertise your merch uh, store and you know. It's it's one of those things where people kind of get the perception that if you're a businessman, that means you're always cutthroat. But like, you have people that are willing to share it because, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of markets that people think, oh well, if you're in, you're, you know, you can't really be in there because there's already like ten tens of thousands of people already doing it. But yeah. you know, everybody can still get a piece of the pie, like you know, in certain in certain you know industries, yeah. you know, and others it might be a little bit harder because, you know, there's different rules around that, or not necessarily rules, but you know, different. Uh, I guess rules rules of thumb, I guess, like standard of practices or you know, right. people already have a huge number of like the market share. But right, you know, it's really a matter of just, you know, finding an idea, do your research. There's like you said, Facebook groups, and that's kind of like the awesome thing about social media is that there that that all that stuff exists. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, dude, like you can't really put a, a price tag on that and the fact that it's just all you have to do is set up an account. Well, granted, you know, there's downsides to having social media, but yeah, yeah. Let, you know, we're focusing on the positive. Here, yeah. And it's like, you know, the, the positive is that you can get that information. And um, yeah. So I think now in this day and age, the like a perfect example, like when we were talking about like the people that got fired or got laid off from COVID and they got the stimulus, their stimulus or they got their unemployment. A lot of them invested in the stock market and got into day trading. And yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you look at what happened with GameStop and, you know. Oh, my yeah. God. It's crazy. <laughs> I, you know, for GameStop, the GameStop thing, I saw, like, because there's, there's, like, veteran traders who've been in the business for a long time. They're like, stay away. Stay away. It's a ticking time bomb. You get in there, you're going to lose all your money. And then I saw other traders who are like, I'm going to risk, you know, $30,000 and see what happens. And I saw one guy go and buy a Lambo from that. You think I don't know how much he put in, but I know he made – Four hundred and fifty thousand dollars off for his uh, his uh, it was AMC, and he jumped out and he went and bought a Lambo and like on his stories he's driving his Lambo like, on the freeway and he's, he's like recording himself like passing the AMC saying thank you AMC as he's driving by in his Lambo I'm like dude it's so crazy, but yeah and and you know a lot of those people did not have a lot of money to go in like the people that yeah. uh, did, then, you know that made money off GameStop they yeah. did not like they did not have anything in. You know, you look at that, and it's like you don't necessarily have to go into GameStop or necessarily go into stock trading, but you know, it should. I would imagine that at least it gave you inspiration. Like, okay, I can find something and make it work. I can, yeah. you know, or you know, find something that works already and just put in the effort that I have to do to maintain it and yeah. get it going. So, you, so you, like, are you in the stock market now? Not yet, man. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. You know, I keep making that same mistake where I'm overthinking stuff. And and it's like, you already gave me. Yeah. Yeah. Analysis paralysis, and you already gave me that information, and I looked over it, and I'm just like, "What's stopping me, dude?" It's the same thing that stopped me from starting the podcast. Like, I had to get somebody that I met on on uh, social media through the fishing community, and I talked, I talked to her about it. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about starting a, a, a podcast, and I told her all the details, and she goes, "Okay, do it. What's stopping you?" And I'm like, "Ah, uh, she called me out, man. Oh, <laughs> she called man. me out." And to this day, I mean, she's like the last person to give that final push to make me actually start the podcast. And then here we are, you know, almost 20 episodes, you know, in. And I'm like, all right, and I'm enjoying it. And I think good things have come from it. But it's one of those things where we talk about like analysis paralysis because that was stopping me from, from doing the podcast. And now it's kind of preventing me from getting this, into trading. Got to do it. <laughs> got to do it. Yeah, there's no, other, there's no other way to say it. Like, you just got to do it. Like, honestly. Got to do it. I mean, but yeah, then again, but, I mean, this is like 
I mean, you're dealing with money, so you want to do it smartly, but you gotta you gotta get in there, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, we're doing it smartly, but like you already gave me the the information, so now I have yeah. the the risk is now calculated. So it's like Very, yes, calculated risk. I can tell you right now, Apple's not going under tomorrow. You you good you're good with buying Apple <laughs> or Tesla. <laughs> So no, yeah, dude. Uh, one thing that I remember what was it? I, I I don't remember what it was, but somebody told me to invest in. I forgot what it was, and I was just like, nah. It might have been GameStop. <laughs> now oh. that I'm thinking about it, and I was like, nah, like in, in like no, I'm not gonna invest in that. And it ended up, you know, oh, Bitcoin. There you go, Bitcoin. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I remember. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're not encouraging people. You know, Bitcoin's its own thing, but you know, yeah. It, the example, the point I'm. The reason why I'm bringing this up is not necessarily to get people to go into Bitcoin or anything like that, um, but it's just a matter of like the research was done and I was told when it was at eight dollars per Bitcoin. What? Was like yeah, back <laughs> this was back in like 2013, I believe it was like eight dollars or something like that yeah. per Bitcoin. It had just dropped from, if I'm not mistaken, and I might need to fact check this, but I think it had just dropped from, I mean maybe 1800 or something like that. It dropped to eight, 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 uh, eight dollars per Bitcoin. Wow! And because I saw that massive dump, I was like, no. like "Yeah, yeah." But the yeah. guys that the guys that told me to do it, they were they have Bitcoin, but they were they their sole purpose is to hold it. Yeah. Oh, do you so, still talk to those guys? Yeah, that's all I know. They're freaking <laughs> they're like, dude, how like, are they doing? They're doing fine. They sold some, and then they they're still keeping some though. That's the thing, and then. Um, they're waiting for it to come back down to be, but to buy some more, but yeah, yeah. it's close to like 60,000 or something like that, you yeah. know? So it's like, you yeah. know, but you, I know mean, the, you know, what's crazy. Like mm -hmm. you got, you got to think like from the date that we're recording this, you got to think like a year from now, I wonder what Bitcoin's going to be at, you know, like we're, we're saying 60,000 right now, but can you imagine like one year from now, I wonder what that number is going to be. People were like, Oh, you were there when it was 60. Like it's a hundred now. And you're like, Oh crap. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, I was like, I'm, I'm already feeling that right now, dude. I was like, I remember when it was eight dollars. Yeah, when you said that, I'm like, oh, this guy's old. Look at that, he's talking about his eight dollars. Like, that's a long it time was ago. Only seven years ago, though. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've heard. Like, uh, I was, I was, wa I was reading, I was watching, uh, reading this little article about a guy who, um, I think in New York, he spent like two hundred Bitcoin to buy two P uh, Papa John's pizzas, and it was like, oh, the first transaction with uh, Bitcoin. So he bought a pizza with two hundred Bitcoin. And he said it's worth like, I don't know, some crazy amount of number. He, he, he bought pizza with Bitcoin and it was like, oh, it's funny, you know. Oh, look, he used uh, crypto to buy uh, pizza and now it's worth like 200 million. That's how much it was like when you convert it, whatever. So I was like, dude, can you imagine? Imagine yeah. being the person the person that sold in the Papa John's. It's like, oh, yeah. it's Bitcoin. Yeah, and, for real. And then it's like now you got a whole bunch of money just lying down. Just lying there, and then then the other crazy one is where people, the people who forgot their passwords, like oh. they kind of just forgot about Bitcoin. You know, probably went about the lives. Like, oh yeah, I have ten Bitcoin, just forgot, and then now they're like, yo, those Bitcoin are worth sixty grand each, and you're like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was I was hearing something about that, like that that. Uh, and for those that are listening, sorry that we went off a little bit of a tangent, oh, but yeah. it's kind of it's kind of interesting to talk about because uh, so those people that like forgot their passwords to whatever their their source for crypto that they were using yeah. and every time they get like they only get so many tries and every single time they fail they lose a coin yeah so so it's like oh no, no they, they get so many tries and then after a certain amount of tries that's it you, you lose your wallet forever yeah. or something like that yeah i wonder, wonder if it gets yeah i don't know what it just gets lost like i don't know how that works because i'm not that you know versed in crypto but i mm. i've heard about that too like if you have one more try to get in there once it's in you're locked out forever so is that 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 Bitcoin is just lost? It's just in the it's in it's just out in the world and no one can ever own it. Is that I wonder if that's how? I wonder that too because I don't know if it's one of those things where it's like it gets returned like, back like, to the the uh, the pot or I don't know. I I would I imagine know. it'd be something like I mean I'm just imagining I don't know but I would imagine like it'd be something like where like a person dies they sell their home and then like further down like maybe like 20 years 30 years 40 years later like they tear it down and they find like a stash of of just dollars just sitting yeah. there because somebody except was hoarding them there except, yeah except this is crypto so it's like in the air so it's not like yeah that, that's weird so i i think it's just lost to the world because there's only a limited amount of bitcoin right there's there's an end game like there, there you can you'll reach the limit at some point so yeah i think 
it's just lost. So I think it's like millions of Bitcoin that are just lost. People lost their passwords and they're just gone. That's it. So um, yeah, or you know what? I think it depends on which who's the one that's like hold like sourcing the wallet, like which service you're using. There might be some kind of disclaimer that if you forget your wallet, we either reserve the right to use that those coins or something. I don't know. Maybe there's something like that. Maybe we have no idea. <laughs> we have no. <laughs> we're, we're just, just guessing. Like, we're like, I have no idea. People are like, I know it works. These guys don't know what they're talking about. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, dude. And like, but um, yeah, and you know, just to bring it back, like, so one of the things we were talking about before we hopped on, we we're talking about fiber. Oh, and yeah. how, like that's a really good resource, and you know, kind of you, you have more experience than I do, so you kind of like go ahead and explain, like, is, you know, is it really expensive, affordable? Does it vary? You know, right. Those type so. Of things. So, so Fiverr is an opportunity for professionals in different categories to offer the services for money. So uh, whatever they do, say, you know, you're an artist and uh, you can make drawings for people or you're a writer of some sort. You can write up a paragraph, paper, something. So whatever their skill is and whatever you do, you can offer your services for an amount of money. So there's actually people offering services to be your um, ad agency. So you could pay them money and they'll promote your business and um basically run ads for you so i actually uh when i was first starting out with facebook ads for my my watch company i actually hired a dude in pakistan off of fiverr for like 50 bucks for the week he would run my ads and set it up and it was weird because he was he was good i'll give him that because I, I i had one zoom call on him so we're doing back and forth and he was talking to me he goes all right i need access to this and that and so i was kind of sketchy he goes like uh some dude in, you know, Pakistan's gonna do this for me. I don't know. <laughs> so like he took control over my uh, my laptop and then he ran into my Facebook ads. He made sure my uh, website was connected to Facebook and he was doing all this little technical stuff that I, I would have not, not known how to do. But it was funny because as he was doing it, uh, his, his mic is on so I could hear like monkeys in the background. So I'm like, <laughs> where the hell is this dude? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I see him here, but like I hear monkeys in the background. So I'm like, where is this guy? But uh. He ran my ads. He did a pretty good job, and he basically set the, the basically the you know the framework of what I need to run my ads. And I just took over after that one week. I paid him. I took over, and I just run the ads on my own now. It's pretty much automatic. But uh, I've done the same thing for paying for an artist to do a logo for me. Um, there's some people who like on their uh, Instagram they like to do memes, right? Like a lot of these meme pages. I actually saw a person on Fiverr uh, offering for $20, they'll do 200 memes for you. So they just create memes for you. Yeah, you pay them $20, 200 memes. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, you could hire a meme creator if you want. So, damn. Yeah, there's a lot, I mean, a lot 20 of bucks, stuff. And then, 20 what? bucks is pretty cheap. Yeah, that's so why I said 20 bucks for 200 memes. Like, it's such a weird conversion, but like, that sounds like a really good deal. But I was thinking it's probably something generic. She just kind of, Go to slaps your logo on it or something. I don't know, but I'm curious to see what what 200 memes. You know, what, what, when you pay for 200 memes, <laughs> what are you getting? You know? Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, uh, that's good that you talked about that because, like, for example, like for something that, like, what you just got, what you uh, what you described that you got, like that for fifty dollars is actually not a whole lot to be honest, especially yeah. um, considering, you know, that kind of service here costs a good amount of money. Yeah, uh, those kind of consulting services. So I think uh, that's something else that we you know we often kind of overlook that these these type of things they cost money, but relative to what? Like you know, this kind of mm -hmm. makes a perfect point to transition into when we're talking about like spending your money, not necessarily conservative, but you know, spending your money either the right way, depending on what that right way is, or you know, making sure that you know that we don't do a lot of frivolous expenditures when we're trying to start a business. Like for example, like we hear oftentimes, like for example, like the the broke college student doesn't want to spend like 10 bucks for an organic piece of meat, but they'll buy like two, like, you know, Starbucks coffees, whatever. They're like five bucks a piece. And it's like, yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. And obviously I just, you know, talked about that. I just brought that up as an example, not necessarily, you know, to bash any college kid that, right. <laughs> that, that likes Starbucks or anything like that. Yeah. But, but, you know, there, there's different things like that. Like, um, one of the things again, when we go back into analysis paralysis, we we look at like, well, it's gonna cost twenty bucks for a subscription of this, or you know, like for example, Shopify. Like Shopify, I think is like, I want to say thirty dollars, like to start. Yeah, something like that. And I mean, 
But a lot of people think, well, $30 a month is a lot. And it might be, and depending on who you are, right? But, you know, depending, but we got to analyze sometimes, like, hey, I'm spending 30 bucks between several subscriptions of, like, I don't know, like, because now that you have Netflix, a bunch of subscriptions. Yeah. Yeah. Netflix, like, Hulu, what is it, the NBC Hulu. one, the yeah. Discovery? A lot of people, like, you know, we have, I myself only have the Netflix account, but, you know, like, there's other subscriptions that we can have that we have that we pay for. And it's like, well, why don't we just stop paying for those for a little bit, pay for Shopify, start yeah. my merch, see how that goes. Yeah. You know, and that's true. A lot of they, yeah. do, they, they do most of the, the, the work for like shirts and things like that. Yeah. Or print. Well, as far as merch, it's like some print on demand uh, services where you don't have to hold inventory. You know, you could start, um, a, 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 you know, your shirt and says mindful endeavors and it's a print on demand. So someone orders the shirt and then it gets created. So you don't ever have to hold, you know, you don't have like boxes and boxes of shirts waiting somewhere like, no, that's a lot, a lot of these, um, uh, companies are offering you print on demand. So that's like, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can get into an industry. Like, and the barrier entry is getting lower and lower and lower. You could advertise on social media. Like there's, there's so much, so much helping you to succeed. Uh, I think one of the things people have to just realize, or you just got to start thinking like a businessman, like, you know, li liabilities, assets, you know, uh, buying a coffee every day. That's like, it's, it's a liability. You're spending money. You don't, you don't need that coffee every day. You know, uh, an asset to you would be a, a, a income producing business. So definitely want to invest. Everything's an investment. So uh, investing in a your own self, your own company, that's going to pay you back later time or, I think it, it just comes out to that delayed gratification, you know, up. I'm not seeing this money right now, but you know, two, three months down the line, it's going to make me some money. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, yeah. And like the more I do the podcast, yeah. Revin? delayed gratification, that's, that's the key. You just got to know it's coming back. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the more I do this podcast, I mean, um, and this is kind of why, like the perfect re like, you know, way to point it out. Like this is why I kind of like, ties in a little bit into mental health when you look into financial health because we can fall in these little pitfalls when we're trying to make ourselves financially stable right yeah um like that the, the whole thing was like instant we fall for the instant gratification where we really should kind of like every now and then balance it out with some delayed gratification because right i mean we're not saying that you should like be miserable until you make it like no, no. but like there definitely needs to be balance like yeah. and there's certain stuff that you know like we're talking about like like I mean, we're going to keep bashing on coffee just because, you know, it's the easiest example. Hey, but Yeah, it adds up. I mean, it, it does add up. Like, even, like, sometimes it's, like, buying a soda every every day. Like, that's two bucks two, or 250 yeah. depending on where you're at. Two, you know, two bucks per day. That's $10 a day yeah. with four weeks. There's your there's your Shopify subscription. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Um, knowing what I know now, like, when, when I was 21 – the things I would have done differently for sure. Cause like on the stock market, I can approach the stock market with a, a more confidence. Right. So I, I could see myself putting 50 bucks in the stock market and just not worrying about it. And then you could grow $50 into a good amount of money. If you're just kind of, you know, you're just working on it. You're not, you know, you're not spending anyone. The stock market makes money on its own and you just invest a little bit of money. So now I, I, I know that I'm like, Oh wow. Yeah. I could have done that. Like, Oh, that's, I wish I had done that earlier. But, uh, just, yeah, man, there's so much that I know now that I wish I'd known back then. Like even, oh, those ones, credit cards. Now I learned the power of a credit card. I was like taught when I was younger, like, oh, be careful with credit cards. You're going to get in debt. You know, mm. you know, now I know how to use them. Uh, and there's dudes getting rich off of credit cards, it's like leveraging credit cards. Like, uh, more recently, cause I'm more looking more into real estate. Um, I joined a group, another more group of uh, people who are getting rich off of credit cards and they're leveraging credit cards to do crazy purchases. Like, um, well, one idea would be to, uh, you buy a bunch of cars. So you won't, you would think like, wait, a car is a liability. Why would you want to buy a car? But there's some people who are using credit cards. Like they have a spending limit of 30,000 or whatever, $40,000. They'll buy three or four cars. Then they rent those cars out. Now those cars are making the money. They're paying off the credit cards, and their the credit the cars pay themselves off because they're just renting. So basically, it's a business expense. Or uh, people using credit cards to basically rent a property, then turn it into an Airbnb property, 
And that's, they're using these, they're leveraging the bank's money, these credit cards to get into a business that's going to, you know, create revenue. And I'm like, dude, that's, it's crazy. And now I'm even seeing people because I'm in California. If you want to buy a house, like the most ugliest, smallest house, you're paying <laughs> close to half a million dollars. Like it's crazy. However, there are parts in the United States where you can get a nice, beautiful, big house for like, Forty thousand dollars, and I'm I'm seeing I, I'm in the, in my group. I'm literally seeing people buying three, four houses, um, you know, fixing them up, getting a mortgage on them, and then paying off the credit cards. So with just credit cards, they're buying houses with credit cards. They'll fix them up and get a bank loan, and then whoever's then they have a renter in there, and the people renting are paying down their mortgage while they're here in California or you know one of the higher markets, and the houses are paying for themselves. I'm just like. Eye opening, <laughs> and that's that's what happens when you when you put yourself in groups of other people with that mindset. You know, they're entrepreneurs. All these people are thinking of ways to make money, creative ways. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it go, but it goes back again to patience. You know, and delayed gratifications because I mean, delayed gratification because renting a house, you know, might not seem anything like you can't really think of like renting out a house in the short term because that's the wrong way to think about it really. Cause you're not really going to make a whole lot of money right, right off the bat and you're just going to stress yourself out. And, you know, you're worried about getting your money from the, you know, whatever you put into it. And that's kind of like a bad way of looking at it. So it's a lot, a lot of it is patience because, you know, you don't want to like get that. you like, you're like, cause if you're impatient, you're going to be stressing yourself out even more yeah. when you're trying to get into this business. So, yeah. And especially when you're first starting out, I mean, that's the most important thing. As long as you like, I mean, I get, I also understand too, like if you're bleeding out money, then yeah, yeah like, you need to yeah. like, eh. like, they say, what's the word? Um, like the way to get rich is to make more money and like lower your own expenses if you can. Because if you just, you know, if your expenses increase and your income in increases, then you're just, you'll be continued. Can you continually be functionally broke because your expenses and your income is just going higher and higher right next to each other. So you're not really making any more money. You know, if you're, if you're making 10,000 a month, but then you spend eight or, you know, 10 a month as well, you're just right, right where you started. You're just making more money, but losing the same amount. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it really, it comes down to just kind of, I mean, I'm not like, cause I mean, I, I'll be honest, like when I was growing up, even before I got into like entrepreneurship or starting looking into that, I always used to hate people that would be like, well, if you, you know, if you want to spend money, it's because you don't want it. Like, no, nah, like, uh, you know, it's not the same yeah. case for everybody, you know, like yeah. calm, calm down, you know, but like, um, you know, it's not even to say like, Oh, like what, you know, you need to change your lifestyle or anything, but you know, just think about this, certain things, you know, like, yeah. like a lot of times, like, I feel like if we're like going through life and we get like certain stuff, again, back to instant gratification, we get certain things, we get stuck in buying, you know, like, Oh, well, I mean, I have enough money to, put food on the table and then buy like, I don't know, Lakers tickets. Like, look at I used to buy Lakers tickets a lot, which, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, once or twice, great experience. Yeah. Multiple times. It was like, at that point I'm like, yeah. okay. I mean, I can watch them on TV for free. Um, yeah. You know, I don't necessarily have to buy them right now. Like the, the Lakers tickets, I can use that money and leverage it on something else. And yeah, that's where one of those things where I made that mistake while I was trying to create a business, I was still doing these expenses Mm. Which is not necessarily a good thing, you know. Like it was, it didn't work out for me because it was just well, putting more. What kind of business was it? What kind of business was it? So I was getting into uh, selling uh, filtration systems. Okay, interesting. Yeah, interesting. At the time, it made sense because there was, there was a craze of like the whole alkaline uh, type yeah. of thing. Um, it the the reason why it failed was twofold. One, because it really wasn't set up properly. Mm. Um, in the sense that it wasn't necessarily a viable business to begin with. Yeah. Um, and two, I didn't, you know, put in the proper money to market the, the business. And that's where the whole Lakers tickets kind of came into play. Oh, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I have the mentality where it's like, all right, I'm 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 out of college. I have my job. I just want to, you know, have fun. Yeah. So when I was trying to do that and then the side hustle, which was, you know, the alkaline water stuff, um, you know, it got – you know, cons uh, not overwhelming, but it was just taking up a lot of my time. So I was like, yeah. you know what? I need to start having fun and all this stuff. Uh, you need goal. to start and having fun. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. and that's kind of where that happened. But in hindsight, dude, like, it, I guess it played out for the better because I don't, I didn't really see myself doing that for the rest of my life. So, um, you know, there's definitely pros and cons, but the cons definitely were like learning experiences. So, right. Yeah. And it's one of those things where like, you know, you got to really like right now, like people are buying up Pokemon cards, like crazy, yeah. dude. They're crazy. That's yeah. Wild. Yeah, dude. Like, like, oh my God. Like that, that's why I'm like sometimes confused because we're talking about like, well, you know, we're going through COVID. The economy's in a rut right now. How the heck are people spending so much money on like Pokemon cards? Like you yeah. see that these cards are going for like 500, 800, 1,000, almost 2,000, some even like close to like 5,000, dude. Yeah. And people are spending that much money. I don't you know. know what? How, like, maybe. Maybe that franchise is just that successful because remember when the the app came out, the game, right, the Pokemon game, where people were like going yeah. outside catching Pokemon. Like I, there was an actual industry that popped up when that. Like I he- remember hearing people who were saying like they'll go out and catch Pokemon for you. Like people quit their jobs just so they can run multiple accounts for people and say, you know, for twenty five an hour, I'll go out there and catch Pokemon for you on your account. And like that whole industry, I'm just like, dang, this there. Pokemon, whoever is running their marketing is doing a wonderful job because people are crazy over that. But yeah, those cards are they're doing really well. And when did when did Pokemon come out? How long? Ninety seven, I think. Ninety six. Ninety seven. Yeah. Amazing. Well, you know what's happening though? What's happening with that is that you know we have the generation that grew up with that. Yeah. Well, and now you know their their income level is pretty decent. You know, it's pretty decent. So then they're buying up all the stuff that they couldn't probably afford when you know when we were growing up and you know yeah. and, and pokemon first came out and but you know like you're like that you know you brought the perfect example of pokemon go and how that kind of like somebody saw a way to make money off of that yeah and, that's what i'm saying entrepreneurs pop up they find a way yeah yeah and that's a good example too because i mean i'm not and i'm also not suggesting that you should spend your every waking hour just be like mm, what am i gonna like you know what am i gonna do to make money like some okay people do that some people oh so, you know what when the, the, the you know coronavirus first hit and there was lockdowns like everyone's talking about the mask right mm. with the n95 masks you know the, the ones that the actual uh, nurses and doctors were. so there were some people hoarding them and then selling them for like oh 800 bucks i'll give you i have two masks for 800 bucks and you're just like whoa and i've seen people Saying, "Oh, I was able to get a couple masks." I think they were actually trying to like flaunt on Instagram that they paid eight hundred dollars for two little N95 masks. Yeah, and I was like, "Oof!" But people didn't know; they were scared. They're like, "Maybe this is the only thing that can protect me." So they spent all that money, and that's just supply and demand. It's most basic. Yeah, yeah, it is supply and demand. But it's like, bro, did you remember hearing about that one guy that was like that bought up? I think some guy in Tennessee bought up. All the sanitizer from like oh, the local yeah. areas. And he yeah. was willing to sell it for like I think it, like I don't know like each bottle f- for a ridiculous amount. It, yeah. So it came up to like about like thousand like a hundred like a hundred thousand dollars worth of sanitizer. Like yeah. that should have really only cost him I mean, like twenty thousand or ten. Yeah, he just jacked the up. price up. Yeah. Yeah, and then Amazon shut them down. And since shut them down. Amazon so like backfired. Yeah. yeah. Well, and they didn't let him sell it. Yeah. Now we have more than enough hand sanitizer everywhere now, so it's like, uh, well, he, he took was a gamble. With, I mean, he took a gamble. <laughs> yeah, he took a gamble, and then Amazon shut him down because it was like, well, what? Why are you price gouging? Like, I mean, yeah. Granted, to each them, there's just supply and demand, and you know, we can argue yeah, whether that's, that's more that's of the we... American way. I guess you gotta. It's capitalism. You gotta yeah. take advantage. Yeah, I mean, because then, because then, at the same to that token, like you can add. Maybe another person that's also hoarding sanitizer is hoarding it so that they can sell it maybe for only a dollar over markup versus like yeah twenty dollars over markup. A little more reason that person. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I mean, but I mean, even then, like I saw uh, people that actually got into producing masks themselves. So, like, no, yeah. I don't know how yeah. they, yeah. So like, that's I don't know how they did too. the supply chain, but they, they were just like, you know what, we need masks. So, boom. There, there was a, I saw several people online. Um, there was one company you remember. So, you know, you and I both follow Jocko Willick and you know, yeah. his company origin. Yeah. Like he immediately switched to producing denim masks that can, you can put, you can slip to the filtration system in them. That's that oh. way they can work as an N95. And, you know, oh. he was selling masks that way and, you know, they were making money. So, I mean, the issue is not, we're not trying to pe- tell people to go price gouge stuff that, people yeah. need, but we're just kind of making the point that, 
you know, we just there is ways to make money throughout different points of time yeah. in our in our in our lifetime. And you know, and the only reason why we're saying that we need to make money sometimes is because we want to be more financially stable. Like we don't right. want we want to make sure that if you know, knock on wood, you know, yeah. another pandemic happens and you know stuff has to get shut down, yeah. we have enough money in the bank to last us several months, even a year. That's the whole point yeah. of this. Yep, you know, multiple we'll, streams of income. But one thing I learned is not everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur. You know, that takes a certain kind of person to, you know, be able to deal with failures and unknown. But I think everyone should be an investor in some sense. You know, you buy a house, you've invested into a house. That's an investment. You know, it once you pay it off, it's going to be worth a lot of money. You could sell it. That's an investment. I think the stock market, that's another investment. There's certain companies you can invest in with as little as 20 bucks. And that's an investment. So I think if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, Everyone has to at least be an investor. Invest in something that's going to generate money, because uh, they everyone has to do that. That's just is a, that's just a, a your safety net. You invest in something that is going to be worth something, you know, worth more later on. Like uh, was one thing I, I learned is that if you buy a, a share of Coca Cola, that's like a very stable company, which is a brown. I think Coca Cola has been for around for almost over a hundred years or so, or no, maybe not. Coca Cola has been around a long time, but. You could buy one of their shares of their stock and they give you dividends. So that's basically a small investment in uh, an investment right there. You buy one share of Coca-Cola. I think they give you like 20 cents every quarter. And that's just your first step in, in inv investing in, in yourself, in your future. You know, it, it's yeah. just, it may not seem like much now, but as the more you put aside here, there, you know, it, it builds up. And um, one of the things I learned is like uh, the retirement age. It's not really a, it's not a, a, an age number. It's a financial number because you need to reach a certain financial point to when you can retire. Some people re reach it at 30. Some people re reach at 20, but it's not really, you don't have to wait to be 65 to retire. Like it's, it's a financial thing. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's very, um, I'm glad you brought that up because I mean, like you said, not everybody can be there. I mean, granted that we're trying to encourage or at least encourage people to think about these things, but there is some people that, that may not necessarily be able to be entrepreneurs for, you know, whatever reason, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be because they can't hack it just because maybe they don't like it. I mean, at the same yeah. at the end of the day, you got to pursue what you like. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, like people, like some people are perfectly happy working, you know, I yeah, love their job. Some people love their job. Yeah. Yeah. Some people love their job and that's, that's great. That's also great too. I mean, the thing, the, the thing is that if, you know, if you like something that you're currently you know, doing at a, you know, even if it's a nine to five job, perfectly fine. Like if you like it, if you like it, you have no issues with, you know, you know, you know, that you're struggling with mentally from that job. Yeah. You know, why, why, you know, upset that balance. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can't invest like you were talking about, invest on the side and get, you know, a little bit of, you know, income here and there. It doesn't necessarily mean that, but I mean, yeah. we also do need people that, you know, create art and do all these other things and that, yeah. You know, may not necessarily like, you know, bring in a, sh a crap ton of money, but you know, they definitely <laughs> yeah. add value to society, right? Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. E even something like, I mean, a waitressing job. Yeah. You know, like that. Depending on who you work with, like it's, it all it all comes down to like the community aspect of it. Depending on who you work with, it may it may be a great job that you don't necessarily look for to like leaving as soon as you get there. You know? Right. Because at the end of the day, what we're talking about is like mental health. Like you know, it's all it's all about being happily being content and happy is different to it's it, it's not the same for from person to person because again we're yeah. all wired differently we all have different tastes different likes you know as long as it's safe you know it's safe and uh you're not harming anybody who's to stop you right right i mean <clears throat> this it comes down to that balance because i mean at the end of the day you know companies need, need workers and you know people need people need investors you can invest in with 20 bucks or whatever you know, and it's really yeah. comes down to just the, not avoiding those pitfalls. Like, for example, yeah. comparing yourself to somebody that's, you know, Jeff like comparing. Yeah. Yeah. Comparing yourself like Jeff, Jeff Bezos. Bezos. Yeah. yeah. Elon yeah, Musk. Why am I not Jeff Bezos? Musk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, like we don't need to compare ourselves with that. Like we can yeah. go at our own speed. Like I've. I brought that up before. Like we don't necessarily have to go 100 miles an hour all the time. You know, yeah. and it's OK to have a flat tire along the way. As long as yeah. you're continuously pushing through whatever your goal is and you know we went back going back to when we talked about like setting small realistic goals 
That's what it comes down to. Yeah, it's true. Like, like if you true. want instant gratification, it should come from small goals, right? Yeah. I think I, I read something about, um, it was like a study on the most successful people. And it was those who who knew how, who, who practiced delayed gratification. So like they did a test on like small kids and they said, here's like a donut. If you eat the donut now, you know, that's it. But if you, if you know, if you wait 10 minutes, I'll give you three donuts. And they're, they're just like, they're just testing the little kids to see who would wait 10 minutes to get three donuts as opposed to that one right in front of them. And there was not too many kids who waited the 10 minutes for the extra donuts. They just went, boom, grab that donut right away. But they said, like, if you could teach a child that the patience, you know, for that delayed gratification at a young age, that translates into greater success later in life. And I was like, that's pretty interesting. So, dang. Yeah, yeah. that is interesting. Yeah. So, no, yeah, because I mean, I think, um, yeah, no, no, actually, no, that's a, that's a pretty good way of looking at it. Like, it's, it, you know, you got to learn from somewhere. And, you know, if you can kind of teach your kids that, then you, know, yeah. you can teach them patience, really. Patience. That's, yeah, because even yeah. like starting like an Instagram page, like that takes work. So you're not gonna like right away like build it up in like two days. I mean, unless yeah, you pay true. an excessive amount of money or just pay for yeah. followers, but yeah, some people do that. Yeah, some people yeah. do that. Yeah, and I mean, some people do that. Know. Yeah, hey, you know what? I'm, you can pay. You can pay someone to do that for you. Like Fiverr, you can hire someone to Fiverr to run your Instagram. <laughs> and that's a real thing. Yeah. So, you know, no, yeah, but like the you know, back to what we're talking about, like there's plenty of resources out there, and you know, the whole, the important thing is that don't feel like depending on where you're at, don't feel like you know, because you don't have this, you're not doing well, yeah, that's not it. And as long as you have your health and you're happy and you can you have your time to invest in yourself, we're talking yeah. about investments, the biggest investment you can do is something investing in yourself, yep. whether it's your health, emotional stability. Uh, emotional stability or even financial stability yeah that's the most important thing yeah and uh, um I don't, I don't really have a segue to this but i want to talk about the martial arts oh yeah. okay. there's no segue i just want to get into it because you, you said you, I, you spoke a little earlier before this started that you know you're going to be getting into you know potentially teaching in the martial arts so yeah, yeah. i want to speak on that a little bit all right um so um so let's see i started boxing first and then went to kickboxing and this was like several years back and i was trying to get into cage fighting but that didn't work out um and the, the only reason why it was just because i mentally like psyched myself out at last minute really? so what, what do you how, how do you psych yourself out i was just more in the long lines of where like i was looking at it from this way like i'm spending money a lot of money to get my face beat in uh yeah that's <laughs> so, logic yeah also okay yeah. so common so sense Common sense. I mean, yeah, it's common sense, but I <laughs> yeah, suck yeah. my I suck myself out because I mean, you know, you never know where it could have taken me. Like I didn't even let it run its course. Again, we're right. talking about instant gratification and how that can be a pitfall. There it was. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so and I was still training for a little while, and it's something that I like to do. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but I have a little bit, and um, but it's mostly the kickboxing and boxing that I love oh, to do. Okay. The only thing that um the reason why I like it a lot is because uh, you can, you know, it's something that distresses me for sure. Like I'm just kicking the bag or even working with someone and just kind of like interacting with someone just takes a lot of the stress away. Like that, uh, you know, like a nine to five or just other stuff that's been going on. And right. uh, yeah, so teaching proper form is important. And uh, that's kind of what I, I hope I get to do pretty soon. So, yeah. All right. That's exciting. So when, when do you think you see yourself starting that? Mm, I don't know. At the time that we're recording, maybe, maybe potentially a week from now. And um, okay. yeah, but realistically, like, like I might start putting those kind of videos on my Instagram just for, you know, just shits of gigs or whatever. Yeah. Maybe even just on my story to start off. Um, yeah, because I do, I don't know, like martial arts interests me. And then like, now that I know a little bit of like how to throw a punch and all that stuff, I can see how proper biomechanics goes into that it's not mm. just like you know your typical axe back uh what is it backyard fight you know where no, you're just, hey throwing haymakers yeah, haymakers yeah just swing into the fences yeah yeah Got yeah it. so it's it's more than that man like you know it's a uh, it's a proper way of like using your entire body and also to a certain degree like when you're finding someone 
there is some kind of mental state that you have to get into. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, again, if you're doing martial arts, obviously I'm not encouraging violence, you know, <laughs> I should probably, should probably uh, start it with that. But um, like, if you ever have to like spar with someone, like one of those, one of those things where if you're thinking too much, you are going to lose like plain and simple. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, I don't know. You want, you want to get into martial arts? Oh, big time. You used to wrestle oh. in high school. I was uh, what's his uh, Tim Kennedy. Every I follow Tim Kennedy's page. And I swear, like that guy's like, I, I look at his page. I'm like, yep, I gotta do something. I gotta do something. Like you know, I've done a little, you know, a little, like tiny bit of boxing. But uh, I read Jocko Willing's book. What is it? Discipline is freedom. I think it's called. So I got that book, and uh, he's he, he he's always pushing get into jujitsu. That should be your first your mo- your base your base martial art jujitsu, and then build on top of that. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And um, I've also listened to Jocko's, uh, his own podcast, podcast, mm. I forget what it's called, but um, he just keeps talking about jujitsu. I'm like, dang, everybody I'm listening to saying jujitsu, jujitsu is just, you know, and the idea that you can take down a bigger opponent. I'm like, oh, okay, that helps, you know, and it just seems like a good way to start, you know, just for fitness and just for overall, so you can know how to handle yourself. So I, I want to get into jujitsu. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. It's gonna be one of the things that we remember we talked about hit set a deadline. So like by this date, I'm gonna be in there. I'm gonna be getting my ass beat, but I will be in there. So okay. the only thing is uh here in California with the lockdowns, I don't know. Jiu-jitsu is definitely cl- close proximity type uh workouts that you're doing there. So I don't even know if there's a, a local gym, a local uh you know, a dojo or a uh you know place cool. where I can do jujitsu around here. I, I don't even know. I have to really look into that. But um, yeah, that, that, that's what I want to do. Yeah, I'll tell you a story. Uh, so when I, so I definitely do think that um, Jocko is right in the sense of starting with that because it definitely grounds you. And I don't say that, and I don't mean that like you know, no pun intended or anything like that. And I mean that yeah. like you know, like you, it really grounds you because it really makes you understand how like like when you first start into jujitsu, unless you already. I mean, you have wrestling experience, so it'll be easier for you to pick it up. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have that you're not gonna have bad days when you first yeah. start. And I think, like going into it when you don't know anything, you're gonna get humbled really quick. Yeah. So I mean, it's, yeah, I'm not going going in with pride. So I, 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 from what I've seen, yeah, I'm prepared to get choked out a little bit here and there. That's the thing. Even if you think you're going in humbled. You're gonna get humble. <laughs> like it's that's one more. of those things. I'll get yeah. more humble. <laughs> yeah, because you're gonna realize one of the things that um that's kind of a good takeaway from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is like again, you need patience because you're gonna start from zero. And yeah. you might, depending on how many people are in the class, how many people, you know, uh-huh. are in the gym or the way the the person instructs it, you're gonna find out that you know, you might roll with like person it's a purple belt and you're gonna really find out how advanced they really are and you might even roll with somebody that's also a white belt but i had this one experience where this one girl might should probably weigh like 105 109 oh, somewhere around no. there <laughs> she straight up picked me up like and i weigh close to 200 pounds yeah yeah because i was yeah. trying to get her in the guard right and i had my leg on her hip so i can essentially transition into the guard it did not work and i forgot how she she basically grabbed, I mean, again, we're working with geese, but even then, like, if you had, like, a T-shirt, you can, you know, roll it up, like, significantly to get leverage on it. Mm-hmm. But she got my gi, and then she immediately just kind of, like, started, like, you know, having her way with me, like, in terms of, like, positioning me to basically be able to, like, kind of pick me up. And what? sure enough, <laughs> she picked me up. She, she didn't pick me up a whole lot, but she picked me up enough to when I was, like, holy crap, like, she had me up. Yeah, yeah. And she just brought me back down and, and just immediately got me in an arm bar. Damn. Like, I didn't understand. Like, I mean, again, she what, what was happened. Also, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't understand what happened. I think she was, a, yeah, she was a blue, she's a blue belt now, I think. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah. So then that was me going in and this is probably, I think my first week or so. And uh, I mean, granted that I wasn't going in like, ah, oh, it's just a girl. Like, no, no, no. I right. wasn't going in there like that, yeah. but still like to be able to like see that she did that. And yeah. then that's not even the first time it happened. It happened with another dude that was also lighter than me. Probably was like 160, 170, and I was weighing like 210. Yeah. Still, he still did the same thing. And this guy was like, like I felt like a feather when that dude like, because a lot of it is about leverage. It's not really right. like 
about like muscle so much brute strength yeah 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 it's not about brute strength it's a lot about leverage and like getting the proper you know technique and everything so that's why i think it's really good to start with that because you learn your perception of things like if you have a bad perception or if you have a certain perception that may not necessarily translate to reality right you'll definitely get grounded learn real quick that uh, yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that's so. fascinating yeah and you know martial arts depending on i mean there can be bad teachers of course um i haven't yeah. i've yet to meet one but i have heard of one and um you know depending on who teaches you like it, it definitely teaches you simple uh, discipline simple oh, okay. discipline you know what on that point, i got a question so how what would be like what kind of criteria would you look if you're picking a, a you know a school to go to as far as like jujitsu like what, what would you what should i be looking for Do you know hmm. like so you want to, so definitely you want to go in there. Like if you see the people that they get along really well, even though they go like hard, you know, balls to the wall or whatever, but they're still like, okay. And then nobody's really like put like pulling their, like pushing their own weight around and anything like that. That's one thing you look forward to. Um, another thing too, is like, just depending on like how much attention you get. Right. I mean, granted in the class of like 20 students, it's hard to really yeah. get one on one attention, but like, if you see him trying or the her trying, that's a good thing. Um, but, uh, ultimately it comes down to you, what we really want to see like the technique they're giving, like, cause you can kind of see like after seeing like some UFC fights and stuff like that. Um, the, well, the very first thing for sure, if somebody like it's specifically for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, somebody tells you there's a deadline as to when you're gonna move up in belts, don't go to that school. Uh, deadlines, got it. That's, mm, a, that's the one flag. thing where deadlines. Red flag. It's a red flag. Yes. I could get you a black belt in a year. Like, oh no, stay away. Stay away. Stay away. Okay. Stay away. Yeah. That's one of those things where we're talking about discipline, and then we're talking about delay gratification. You're yeah. never gonna know when it's time for you to get your belt, and yeah. that's actually one of the things that you don't even consider when you're doing it, like when you're learning how to do jujitsu after you, like, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, a lot of people go in there with pride, but if you're a prideful yeah. person, you're going to learn that you don't need, you're not going to be thinking like, Oh, I'm going to be, you know, a blue belt by this day or this day. It's fine. If you want to set those goals up for yourself, yeah. that just means you have to learn everything. And even then it's up to whoever is the, the head of the class, the, the school instructor, whether yeah. they want to give you the belt or not. And, um, like I've I've been seeing in certain gyms that some people like are purposely like keeping people at like purple belt just because they want to they want them to learn more stuff and there's other soft skills they want to learn associated with it. Um, but yeah, like you never want to go to a gym that's gonna be like, all right, well if you do this 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 for three months, you get a belt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's they, they tell you that run away. <laughs> run away <laughs> run away because then again there's that pitfall of the instant gratification because you know yeah. it's not so instant in the sense that it's going to happen like within one day but yeah. they're giving you a timeline of when it's going to happen yeah hmm. so you don't want that yeah and i think i think you know all in all i think that's probably why jocko was talking about starting with brazilian jiu-jitsu first keeps you grounded and, discipline you know, discipline that makes sense. Yeah, discipline is everything. Uh, yeah, uh, cause on that book on discipline, because the title is Discipline is Freedom. And I, now I kind of understand that because I've been trying to wake up at 5 a.m. every morning. At first, it's just like, damn, this is so hard. But eventually, <laughs> eventually, you'll do it. And then it just becomes easier. And then th there are days that are hard, but it becomes easier. And then once you do that, if you wake up at 5 in the morning, like your days seem way more productive. Because like, uh, like on the stock market, I'm here on the uh, West Coast. So the stock market opens at 6.30 over here in the morning. So sometimes I try to wake up at 6 a.m. And then like I'm like, uh, you know, still asleep, trying to get on my laptop, see, do some trades and like that. And then I found when I woke up at 5 a.m., a whole hour earlier, I was able to get up. I'll do a little workout, shower, and, you know, I'm in front of my laptop ready to do my trades. I felt way better, way fresher, way more accomplished. So now I was like, all right, 6 a.m. is not going to do it. I got to do 5 a.m. and I got to do it every day, every day, every day. Sure, on the weekends, you know, take time off, but I got to do it. And that 5 a.m. Is, is real. There was a quote that I read that it said, basically, if you uh, if you wake up uh, at 5 a.m. every day for a year, see if your life doesn't change. If 
for the better. And I was like, I mean, okay, we'll see what, well, I don't know. They say good things will happen. So we'll see. I'm trying it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like I used to wake up when my schedule was different. I used to wake up at 4.30 and go to the gym, come back, take a shower. And that yeah. became easier and easier when I, the more I forced myself. But in my particular case, um, I noticed that once I started being healthier, it was easier to wake up at 4.30 and I wasn't gotcha. feeling like sleepy right off the bat. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but, you know, again, it all starts with creating that habit and you can't really create a new habit unless there's discipline. I mean, a new productive habit because it's easy to get into bad habits. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, again, we go back to Instagram gratification, like, oh, I want to get a cheeseburger because it's really easy to make. Like, I will yeah. get some cheeseburgers or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, why don't I just make the burger it's my, myself? Or just make a steak or cook some kind of, you know, di dish and eat healthy. Well, it takes more time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I can definitely see that. Yeah. So that's a big one too. If you really, if you're out of shape and you want to get in shape, that's a big delay of gratification because the path to get in shape is, is going to be months, week, long time. So you really have to delay those bad habits for a long time to get to your goal of, you know, in shape. Like you, you, have you seen those compilation videos of guys saying like, "Oh, I lost 120 pounds," and then there's like it's a whole like two year journey. Like you got to think like their mindset changed. At one day they just like this is enough. I'm tired of being 400 pounds, you know, and they delayed gratification for years to get to their goal. You know, lose all this weight, and that's just that's a drastic change, but definitely an, an example of you know what's possible. And I say that as I'm yeah. drinking my Taco yeah. Bell yeah. <laughs> Diet Pepsi. You're like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right, man. <laughs> Inspirational. <You're> like, yeah. <laughs> dude, I, I can't believe I didn't bite my own tongue when I said that, dude. Because I was like, because I mean, I got some Taco Bell because, you know, it, again, it, we're I was like 20 minutes away from doing this podcast. And I was like, you know what? Like, my, I forgot to defrost the meat that I was going to make today. Yeah. So I was like, dang it. So I don't have anything prepared i have the vegetables which i'm still gonna eat okay but i had to get something on the fly and i was like all right taco bell it is i guess but what are you gonna you make know, it's one of huh what are you gonna make what are you frosting oh i was gonna make a, a steak basically it was just gonna oh. be a sirloin steak with vegetables and i like to do the vegetables kind of like stir fried oh okay yeah nice, so that's nice. what that was, was gonna happen but again that takes right. time what that's doesn't right. take time yeah. going to the drive through only takes like three minutes food. yeah so, and Sorry, I say yeah. that, of course, ironically and, you know, hypocritically. And I apologize to our listeners are still yeah. listening and people who are, are watching on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so uh, you, are you going to do something? Because you're a good cook on the on the cooking front. Are you going to put, like, videos of you cooking? Or what, what are you going to do with that? You have to share with the world your skills. You got, yeah, you dude. Um, so, yeah. So, like, I'm thinking uh, I'm probably going to definitely be more active on my my cooking Instagram and then share it on my personal or my, my main, the outdoors one. Yeah. Um, because I mean, I do smoke a lot of meat. So, so, you know, but the, but the other one's probably going to be segue into its own business. So that's kind of why I want to do that other Instagram, but you know what? It goes back to what we're talking about. It's a lot of time. It's already a lot of time running one account. Yeah. And, you know, with it's, other stuff like work and other things like that, dude, I just got to, it's a whole job right there. Yeah. I just gotta buckle down and like really, you know, get into it and see what's up. But, you know, I'm I'm up to the challenge. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, you you've been right. consistent with this. You're you're really we're consistent with this. So I mean, is is it getting easier, like doing these? It is getting easier. Um, mm -hmm. uh, one of those things where like it's getting easier because it's getting easier to talk. Because that's one of the yeah. things I had to learn, like how yeah, to talk. You look, you look comfortable doing it. Yeah, you're good. I'm a lot more comfortable now. Like. Dude, I go back and listen to the first episode that I made, dude, and I'm just like, like of, for like uh, two seconds, we're uh, like, me, yeah. me and the guest were just like this, and my my guest is like, so what do you want to talk about? I'm like, damn yeah. it, like I already messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it's getting yeah, natural. Dude. Yeah, you're, you're definitely going with the flow. Like, yeah, it's good, very natural. Yeah, I can definitely see the transformation over the the course of these uh, other episodes. It's good. So yeah, you I know mean, if you're gonna have like uh Jordan Peterson on here or something, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying. Name. So that is a, a good thing that they brought up because I I do one of the things for the future of this podcast is I do want to bring like medical professionals, psychologists, yeah, and things like that for sure. And talk about it like from a more science based perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and I'm still going to keep having people that want to share their stories. Like <clears throat> the last, as of from this recording, the last, well, three out of the last four episodes, somebody shared like a dark, a, a dark story about yeah. one was anxiety. One was body dysmorphia. The other one was, uh, you know, dealing with anger and other things like that. And, you know, that was, that person was a vet. I mean, he is a vet. So, um, yeah, so that's so that's still going to be an, an issue, and then obviously talk about the outdoors, and in this case, we talked about martial arts, so yeah, yeah. you know yeah, all yeah. that good stuff. So that's yeah. always that's always going to be a thing, and yeah, but I do want to eventually get to a point where I can get people to actually work in the field, and I do have one episode then going to come up that's going to be published, bef- I think right before this one. Uh huh. Um, if I mean at the time of this recording, it should already be published, or, uh, yeah. but I think the episode before this is the one that's going to be where we have. I have a somebody that works in the in the mental health field, so it's more of a you know personal yeah. exp- closer experience to the you know the actual right topic. Interesting, but yeah, so nice. that's all right, man. We went over a little bit, and that's cool because yeah, you know it's always fun nice. talking to you. Yep. Uh, let me plug my let me plug my business again real quick. Is uh, all right. hey, can I get a little banner? You say you got show me you have a banner, right? Let me get the banner. I don't Roman. have one made. Let me see. Let me oh, see yeah, if I can make one. Romanwatches.com. Let me see if I can make it on the fly. R O M N watches.com. Wait, wait. R O M N watches. R O M N? N watches.com. All right, add banner. There we go. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, for those that are just listening, it's uh, R-O-M-N watches.com. Uh, you can find Anthony's business there. They're pretty good watches. I'm definitely going to get my, one myself. So, um, But, yeah. So, Thank And you the people that are watching support. on YouTube, yeah. there's a plug. There it is. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So, all right. Any last uh, thoughts? You know, we want to talk about, like, financial aspects or just, you know, things that, you know, that are related to other things that are related to mental health and you know other kinds of things like around discipline and things like that. Any you know, final final thoughts that you might have? Uh, stay fit. <laughs> Get out there. <laughs> just step outside, people. Just walk outside. Get sun. That's that's a good one. A good. You just go out there. Get some sunlight. At least you know ten minutes a day. At least don't stay in the house all day. <laughs> that's so good for you. It's so simple, but just seeing the sunlight or having some sunlight on you that that, that makes a difference for sure. So. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm definitely going to add to that in the sense of like take a break from what you're doing, uh, whether it's the rat race that you uh, people might think that, you know, there's never an escape from or if it's doing something that just people like to do. And, you know, even if you're even if you're at a good pace, it's always uh, beneficial to take a break and just really embrace the outdoors, embrace, you know, nature and just going outside, like you said, you know, taking a quick breather for 10 minutes and it's good for you. Yep, 100%. All right, cool. So, all, all right, right, well, we're going to hop off and uh, stay on the or, uh, stay on the channel. Uh, I'm just going to pause the recording so I can talk to you after, but uh, yeah. Hope you guys all enjoyed the conversation and I think it was I think it was pretty good and we definitely can get a lot of good things out of it. And um, yeah, see you on the next episode. See you on the next episode. That's good. All right.